Good evening and welcome once again to Big Old Straight Talk No Chaser. We have a very interesting subject tonight. Who's responsible for the decline in the black families? This is uh, with the advent of the internet broadcasting where the full scale gender war between black men and women, with black women being the head of the household. With over 70% of the time, men, men are calling, uh, men are being called out for everything from low test scores, wow. poor health, and poor social skill. My panel tonight will be Paula Hudson, Judge Angie Carpenter, educator John Marshall, team member Kim O'Neill, my moderator Jenny O'Neill, and our special guest, Pastor Stan Hood. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. All right, Pastor Hood. Yes. This is a subject that should be dear to everybody hard. So it it's a question. Is the absence of the father or poor parenting skills of the mother the problem? Let's talk about it. All right. Good evening, everyone. Thanks for having me on with you. Um, I guess I'm starting trouble right from the beginning, but that makes a good show, right? <laughs> <laughs> I think that uh, that the biggest problem in the black family is education and communication. Uh, for uh, several generations in a row, we have uh, kind of figured it out after the disaster. <laughs> you know, after the baby's born, we don't like each other anymore. As a pastor, I have uh, frequently had this discussion. Pastor, I'd like you to bless my baby, uh, newborn baby or between newborn to two years old normally. Sometimes they're older. And I would, oh, wonderful. I'd love to bless your baby. Uh, how, uh, let me get some basic information from you. Mother's name, father's name. And somewhere along the line, I asked the question, well, is the dad going to be there? And what do you think the answer is mostly? No, we're no longer together. And I'm like, you got a newborn baby. <laughs> How are you no longer? Well, we, you know, we're, we're not going to talk about him. And then who comes to the baby blessing? A big crowd of females, three generations. And if there is a man, it's typically either a sibling or granddad. And, um, and that, that sent me down this road of the last several years of trying to find out why, because if the church don't address it, who will? And uh, so I began to interview uh, these families and ask them a lot of questions, just letting them teach me. And here's the thing, I, I had no idea that a lot of young people really don't have much of what we call courting or relationship. Uh, you have typically two wounded people from broken homes trying to find love. And uh, it's interesting because a lot of times they don't even know what they're looking for. It is after there are two or three babies down the road and he has a whole litter of them all over the place <laughs> and he can't support any of them. And they're both usually too young to be in that predicament that they begin to get wiser and uh, and the priority is not so much sex anymore, but having a better quality life. But you're behind the eight ball. So you got this girl trying to go to school and trying to do this and trying to do that and raise these kids. And he may or may not contribute uh, because they are doing what they do. I even have young ladies tell me that he wasn't the issue. I just wanted a baby. Imagine how tragic that is. It's just something about the pastor study that's a truth serum. Right? So, so I'm going to give you a couple of numbers just to get the panel kind of kick-started. Remember I said it's uh, education and communication. Uh, so just my opinion, but uh, when in the heading from the 50s into the 60s, you had black families with a high, had the highest rate of marriage and in intact families, meaning about 70% of black people were 
mother, father, and their biological children. And that's what made up the home. It was so embarrassing for a young lady to be pregnant that she be sent down south. <laughs> right. Or or uh, the baby would be taken on by uh, be presented as their sibling instead of their child. And no one would know the wiser because it was embarrassing. Now, you move to 2018 or the last real hard statistics that we have because, you know, you don't have them yesterday. Uh, it's completely flipped. You only have 30 percent of black people married. Uh, 50% of black men will never be married, right? And you have 70 to 74%, depending upon the part of the country, of young ladies who are single parents. And in many cases, there are multiple children uh, by multiple fathers. And remember that number, 50%. You can, get, you can pull these up while we're talking from blackdemographics.com. Do you have some reference? But... Uh, if 50% of black men are single and not married without kids, then what does that tell you? That most of the babies are coming from the small group of cool guys and they don't see the other guys over there that are the nerds or the quiet guys or not the alpha males or whatever. They're just, they just don't see them. And so what happens is later on in life, everybody's playing catch up. And all of us, men and women, typically leave our children nothing, not even their father's name. And so I don't want to give away all my thoughts about why that is. But when you start to look at, I have these, uh, these statistics here in the book that I wrote. I ain't trying to sell it tonight, <laughs> but I got these statistics um, about uh, history, geography civics, reading, and math. And guess who is dead last in all of them? The black African-Americans. Americans, right. Dead last in everything except for things we don't want to be first in. Incarceration, drug abuse, et cetera, et cetera. And all these things are predominantly coming from single homes. So I will give this away because uh, I don't know the panel, so that's good. I will give this away. My goal, uh, I spend about five days a week, every week, even on holidays, counseling couples and sometimes single people on relationships, because if I'm going to talk this much trash, I better try to help somebody. <laughs> right? right? My goal is to bring that Black family back together. And it's been tough sledding because um, it takes a village and it's a mindset that a guy is not necessary because the county, the city, the state, they will take care of me if the man is not around. And it makes it very difficult to convince someone that they have a need that an invisible man will take care of. And it's very difficult to tell this man that uh, he should be responsible for his family when he doesn't think in terms of family. So because that's not what he saw growing up. We have this generation now that if you go back 40 years, uh, broken families are the normal. Blended families are the normal, not intact families. So people tend to duplicate or emulate what they see. So I've laid it out. Uh, I think I stayed within the time frame that you, you gave me uh, uh, and I, I'm talking to our host here. And so uh, I'm going to hand it back to you to take it to the next step. Well, you know, you said a lot there. You know, I got my <laughs> moderator with me and mm -hmm. Judge Carpenter, she has come in with us as well. Mm -hmm. Good evening to you as well, Judge. But I got one question. Do you, do you think the problem is because of not being properly educated or is the problem because of the respect for one another, male versus female? Uh, certainly today with the advent of uh, social media, people can be keyboard heroes, right? You can present yourself any way you want to. And as long as you tap into the emotion of your gender, you can raise an army. 
that's one reason why I wanted to do this topic. Uh, you can raise an army who will amen you. Because remember, we're talking about this pain of not having one parent of another or another. And most of the time it is the father who is missing and somebody can grab a hold of that. And uh, it's interesting because we have all this information at our fingertips. And instead of giving facts, we'd rather listen to people's opinions. And that's why this war is raging on social media between male and female. There's a Bible scripture that says uh, in Proverbs that everybody's case sounds solid until you hear the other side. I'm paraphrasing, but I always love that verse. Everybody's case, whoever makes their case first, it sounds convincing until you hear the other side. And I've been, uh, uh, Avery, I've been dodging uh, telling you who I think is to blame because I want the panel to 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 fight it out. This is an exercise in critical thinking. <laughs> so so uh, I, I want to hear people weigh in. And and as soon as those first blows get thrown, then we can have a real good uh, podcast. <laughs> and, and what we'll do with this, what I'll do to keep it in order where we want to talk all at one time. My moderator have a, had a question and I'm going to shoot up to Miss Paula Hussey because her head is up there. And she was like, it's like she has some knowledge going on, some questions. Then, of course, my judge, she sees this on a daily basis and we'll move around like that. So, Miss Paula, unmute yourself and talk with Pastor Hood. Well, I think I know that you're on target. <laughs> so I'm not, that's not even a question. And I feel like it's a generational thing. It's paid, like you say, it's passed on because of the absentee of the male figure, and its I don't know what it's gonna take to break that mold, but it needs to be broken. And you see it, even in today, it's hard to get a male in a conversation socially to talk about something because he's threatened, at least he appeared to be. Mm -hmm. And then you get poor responses back and it, it creates a, a lot of problems, a lot of problems. And it's because of lack of education and lack of exposure. And mm -hmm. if you continue to hang with people equal to your knowledge, you can't grow. And they don't see the need to get outside the box. Mm -hmm. So it continue to reproduce themselves over and over. And I, mm -hmm. I totally agree with you. Oh, well, thank you. I was expecting you to... To take the first punch. <laughs> oh no, 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 no. Mm -hmm. I, I think it's it's not just male and female problem. It's both, mm -hmm. but it starts way before. Now it starts way back, and mm -hmm. it, we keep reproducing it because no one is uh has taken the time or know how know there's even a problem like you say until they get three or four five six children and no, normally normally the woman gets stuck with these children but now the women are walking the women are walking away from the children as well as the men well i didn't want to go there but if you will i will <laughs> the grandparents are left with these children or someone else mm -hmm. well so, that is part of the issue as well and i know we have to go to the judge but um Babysitting uh, is corruption for children mm -hmm. because there, there has to be stability and consistency. And so when you're riding the carousel, because mama's not grown yet, mm -hmm. right? And she's raising them by herself. So if one day they over here, the other day they over there, the other day they over here, all these things come into play. Exposure to things they shouldn't be exposed to opportunities for molestation by older children to younger children mm -hmm. and if not molestation abuse in some kind of way mental or physical abuse and nobody's paying attention it really is the grace of god that brings these kids from childhood to adulthood oh yes i'm gonna chime in right quick uh hello judge i see you're not <laughs> yes good evening good evening everybody what yes. do you have for what do you have for Pastor Hood? Well, I tell you, you know, I, I agree with you. I agree with you, Pastor. And, uh, you know, because there's so many 
so many different reasons, I believe, for, for why we why we are here today and why, unfortunately, we haven't to discuss this uh, particular topic. You know, as you were speaking, um, I thought of, um, I was just thinking about it from all different angles, you know, just right off when I think of, um, I think of mass incarceration being a major uh, issue here. And that's one of the reasons why we have this erosion of the family. Um, and um, drugs as well. I believe drugs uh, plays a part and it's been playing a part for some time. Um, and, I, and I just have to throw in there that that much of it, I believe is, it is intentional. You know, it was intentionally designed that way. Okay, but mm -hmm. that may be another topic for another time. But I, I just preached a sermon the other day about buck breaking and everybody's mouth was on the floor through the whole message. I didn't get no amens or nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I was given the history of it in the Caribbean, Caribbeans and what it was about and uh, more shocked than my white members because I tend to draw a mixed congregation. Mm -hmm. uh, more shocked than my white members were my African-American members because they weren't aware mm -hmm. of what happened in slavery in the islands. Mm -hmm. And do we have a carryover of that? Mm -hmm. There is a great mistrust uh, between men, black men and black women right. that was were seed sown over 200 years ago. Mm -hmm. And we have not exercised that out of our community. Uh, mm -hmm. For instance, uh, we were, remember I gave that 70% married and then what happened? Mm -hmm. Kennedy got shot. Martin Luther King got shot. Mm -hmm. Malcolm X got shot. Bobby Kennedy got shot. And the Black Panthers were massacred. Mm -hmm. And that was another episode of buck breaking. Basically, it is a subliminal message that you are less than and you need to be subservient and respect those of uh, Anglo-Saxon descent, mm -hmm. but you don't have to respect those of color because we're not worth anything. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I think and for so oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, oh, awesome. So, so when a child in this, in this book, I don't want to talk about my book all night, but it, it is right there. In, in this book, <laughs> in this book, I start with my first grade when I'm first out of uh, the home for the first time outside of the realm of the family. And I discover in Mrs. Kelly's class, this big old white, big old fat white woman with a switch by her desk, right? That's what she whooped us with a switch. That's how old I am. <laughs> That's when I found out I was black. It had not occurred to me until public education that there are levels to worth and value. And at six years old, I understood that black people were worth less. And it, nobody, my parents never said it. Nobody ever told us that, but you discover it once you enter into the world away from home. And unless you are of African descent or minority, you can't explain what a hill that is to climb. Mm -hmm. Judge? Well, I, agree with, I agree with that wholeheartedly. Mm -hmm. I mean, I was nodding the whole time because I'm telling you, I, you know, and, and it's a, um, you know, when, and I apologize, y'all, that's my puppy barking. That's all good. <laughs> so anyway, um, you know, when, when a group of people, when they see your power, sometimes they see it before you even see it, okay? Mm -hmm. And when they know that you're a, a brilliant, you know, because when we think of the, the inventions that were, you know, created a long time ago, you know, and we're we're really at the root of all those inventions, but they don't want us to know that, you know, mm -hmm. so they don't, they don't want you know, to know your worth. And when you don't know your worth, then unfortunately these things happen and you end up going down the path to go down. And then again, some of it is by design as well, you know, um, mm -hmm. um, but I also want to add something else too that I think that, um, this generation, I guess, I mean, I include my generation as well. You know, we, unfortunately, we, we look at, I believe we look at love and commitment differently than, you know, our, our parents, our grandparents, great grandparents, we look at it differently. You know, nowadays, you, you know, I know some people that have, um, you know, gotten married, uh, uh, and 
they knew uh, or they decided at the forefront, okay, well, you know what? I'm probably only going to be mayor for a few years, you know, almost kind of like you're just kind of testing this out to mm -hmm. see what's going to happen kind of thing, you know. Um, so you obviously don't, they obviously don't understand what love is. And of course, you know, a lot of that is because you, you may not have been taught the true meaning of love yourself or may not have seen and shown to you. So that's an, another layer in itself. But again, I think it's the way generations now see love. We don't value love as much. We definitely don't value commitment as much, mm -hmm. you know, and that's going to be shown in the, in the high divorce rates and everything. So I think that's a, a difference, but however, let me throw one other thing in there though. There was a time when some people would stay together because of the children and I kind of, you know, I, 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 I don't agree with that at all now, you know, and we, and, and so, you know, I know we have a lot of people who were, came before us, they were married 50 and 60 years or whatever, you know, and that's a good thing. But if you were married for the children and you were really not in love yourself, then that's, you know, and I think that's something that our generation sees that, okay, well, you know what, that's not, a, that's not a good thing to stay together just because of the kids, because you're, they're seeing you fighting and all of this. And so they're not seeing true love. Well, Judge, I, I have to push back at you on that one mm, okay. because uh, we love sometimes is too subjective. Your value system is the constant, you know, and so you can choose to be happy with someone. You just have to choose that someone wisely. Right. And even if somebody is, uh, we'll say my wife, you know, sometimes she believes I'm a jerk. Right. And I probably am. <laughs> However, she has structured her life so that she's not expecting me to be everything to her. Because when you expect somebody to be everything to you, guess what you're going to be disappointed. You know, there's something that has to be inside of you that chooses joy. And so when uh, love is important, but the value system will keep that love going. I'll give you an example. Uh, one of the questions I ask the people in counseling is, have you been in love? And most of the time they'll say every time. And I walk them through every one of those relationships. And at the end of it, I want them to realize that love was not enough. Mm -hmm. You have to find somebody with similar values and those values are going to hold that relationship more dear than how you feel that day. Because here's the truth of it, Judge. Every woman on the planet got the same thing. They got the same body parts, right? <laughs> they, they have the same, they have the same potential uh, when it comes to what happens in the bedroom. Mm -hmm. So what happens to people is when they, when they think, well, this person isn't giving me what I want. The other person, the next one is going to have a different set of issues and things and personality issues that they're not all going to make you happy. Mm -hmm. You know, so so what you have to do is choose someone with a similar value system to, to yours and then you make it work. See, sometimes we have these these uh, Disney, uh, Tyler Perry romantic comedies, ideas about love, and we ain't gonna never be happy. We're gonna end up with that dog barking. <laughs> right? And that's gonna be our friend. That's gonna be unconditional love because they don't talk back. That's but with a person, they're gonna talk back. They're gonna have their own attitudes, their own issues. And so the growth has to take place in me because I gotta take me to every relationship. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I and I agree with you. I, I agree with you 100 percent on that. I guess when I when I gave that example uh, of people staying together because of the children, I'm thinking of instances where people, you know, some people get together and they were never truly in love in the beginning. Okay, mm -hmm. almost kind of like you give them with somebody to learn to love them. I don't agree with that at all, but um, but some people do that. But I, I'm speaking of those instances where there was never really, really love and respect in the beginning. And sometimes, oftentimes, there's abuse. But some people, some women, oh, yeah, yeah. would stay in that situation yeah. Yeah. because you know because we've got kids together. I, I I hear you. I promise you, I hear you. And and I and I know that uh, you know. I think as women, we tend to you know want to have that knight in shining armor kind of thing. You know, and nowadays. You know, we may have some women that. Junebug got to do. 
you know. You got to do it. by yourself. <laughs> let me tell you, you know, I, I want to I wanna hear, I really do, um, uh, at some point, I really want to hear from the other females here because, mm-hmm. you know, um, you know, I, I think now that moreover in a relationship, you have women, you know, even though you may have these different issues, women are the ones who tend to put up with a whole bunch of crap now, put, put up with a whole bunch of crap, you know, and they're the ones, they're the reasons why the relationships are lasting longer. Okay, so basically you just described the color purple. I, I, I counsel people every day, and the color purple has made black women afraid of black men. They see Mister every time something go wrong. They checking his phone. They checking his underwear. They trying That's to find out where he's been because they see That's Mister. Not what I said. <laughs> I said, I said, I said women see no. I said Mister women see the like mailbox in case you open up and Mister go outside. Come on, that is not what I said. That is. I know, but I had fun saying it. <laughs> I believe you say he see me silly. <laughs> that's, not what I, that's not what I said at all. I'm just saying I think that women are the ones who tend to try to make it work, try to make that's the relationship good. and the marriages work. I think they, I think women tend to because we, because we, I think that's how we are wired. We want to try to solve things, and 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 because we're coming from a place of emotion, we want to try to make things work. And I, that's how I'm going to say it on this, because I think I'm kind of veering off on where we are. No, you're good. I, I'll keep it to myself. I want to hear from the other yeah. ladies as well. But, but let me chime in on that, Judge. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> you stepped on my tail that time. Uh-oh. <laughs> All right. It's like, I understand your view. Mm-hmm. But men has this view as well, a way that he would like his significant other to be it took me two times to get it right Mm -hmm. all right because my vision Mm -hmm. it's going to lead to something else my vision of what i wanted i wanted somebody to walk that path with me Mm -hmm. but when the female vision all of a sudden i thought was the same as mine veered Mm -hmm. and went totally south and i was going north Mm -hmm. All right. There was no room for the correction because my life and my path of what I wanted to do was already set. And that's one of the main things was to provide for my family. All right. And the, the route that I took was the best way at that time for me to provide for my family. So when it went south, I went north, it went gone. Mm-hmm. But during the process, God put a person in my life that had the same passion and the vision that I had. Mm -hmm. And we brought our kids together, made a blended family coming into my subject where we was talking about the absence of the man being incarcerated or being a woman coming from an abused uh, family. Mm -hmm. You have some men, the way I was raised from my daddy, first of all, you be the man of your house. You, once you ask that woman to become your, your mate, that's your job. And you make sure you take care of everything that has to be taken care of. Secondly, if you accept a woman, you accept what comes with her. All right. If she has kids, those kids become your kids. That's right. So in the absence of that black man, man that didn't want to set the plate and he went south, mm-hmm. some men step up uh, past the hood to take the, the void off of those deadbeats, dads is what we call them these days, mm-hmm. and become the parent and the father figure that these kids would never have had. Mm-hmm. So I, I, I would have to agree with Pastor Hood. We went back to the color purple. We I see some Miss Silly come out. <laughs> I want to, you know, it's just not the, it's just, it's just not the male. We have the female as well. That goes the wrong way. I know we I know I know that we have only so much time, but I really would like to I want you to tell me what I said because that that's a stark contrast from what I thought I said. Okay. I think you all heard I made, okay. I, I, made I made light of it, but you gotta remember I do this every day. Uh-huh. And where a lot of ladies think their argument is unique, it's pretty much the same. 
It's what about it going wrong? That's typically what that's what you said. What about when it goes wrong? And I, and people rarely use examples about it going right. That reaches back to those 50 percent of black males who are childless and marriageless. Right. They are invisible because what happens is there's a type. There's a type that a lot of people go for. It's the outgoing guy. He's six feet tall, at least. And he's accomplished and he, he was on the football team. Uh, he's good at his job. And, and the average guy, um, he, he's, the, he's the rebound guy. I mean, I'm just going to be real with you. He's the guy after that dude then messed over you. He then gave everybody on the block a baby. And now that we're getting older, stuffed and fail. We don't look like we used to. Now we're going, you know what? Maybe I was shooting too high. And it wasn't that you were shooting high. We were shooting for excitement. And I'm going to tell you, the boring guy, they got, they got surgery for your eyes. They can, they can fix your cone head. They can give you some more hair. They can, you know what I'm saying? They, you can fix that. that dude. I if agree with that, but it sounds like it's assumed what that most women feel that way. I agree with that. <laughs> But it mm -hmm. sounds like what y'all are saying is that you all think that most women feel that way. And I don't think I don't think most women feel that way. I think no. there are exceptions to every rule now. No, yeah, it's not a right line have, rule. Judge, we don't deal with possibility. That's Disney. Huh? We deal huh? with probability. We deal with prob and what is probable is an average man is going to get with an average woman and their life is going to be boring. And so it takes maturity to get into that routine and say, we're going to make the best of sitting here looking at each other. If you could sit there with somebody and look at them without talking and, and be satisfied, you can have a great marriage. But all this, you got to keep sweeping me off my feet. You got to keep wooing me. You got to feel that way. Not no, want to you, feel said that women, way. you said women put up with a lot of stuff. And the real answer, Judge, is that people put up with a lot of stuff because everybody's human. And everybody is flawed. It is not a one-sided thing. See, see, see what the Lord did, Judge? He didn't froze you, so I can get this out. <laughs> <laughs> People put up with a lot of things. It is not a one-sided thing. We all put up with things. It's just men typically do it in silence. All right. Uh, I got one question. You, I want to go back. <laughs> I want to go back to Miss Paulo on that, but I want to want my moderator. He had a very uh, unique question for you, mm -hmm. Pastor Hood. And let's see, can we uh, get Judge Copper to unfroze? Yes, let, I'm gonna pray. She goes. Yeah, she needs. She needs to get some <laughs> over right here right now. She'll be all right in a second. All right, uh, Miss Miss Pastor Stan, how you doing? Well, I'm great. And by the way, sorry about all the stuttering. No, we freezing up, but. I did a little background studying on, on your subject, mm -hmm. and it says almost 70% of children born to single mothers, oh, 70% of the children that are born today are born to single mothers. Mm -hmm. And reason the reason I see that is because <laughs> there is an absence of hey. a male. <laughs> Can y'all hear me? Yeah. Yes, you can. <laughs> Wait a minute. Mute for a minute, Judge. <laughs> Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Wait a minute. Yes, go ahead and finish your question, sir, because I know the judge want to come back because uh, yes. I was messing with it earlier. Go ahead. But, you know, it said, it's just, the status says that 70% of the children born today are born to single mothers that are running mm -hmm. households. And I think that's the the fault for that is there is no male there was there was no male role model for these young bo young boys pretending to be men to fault they didn't get that guidance from another man saying hey this is what you have to do a b c and d to be head of household mm -hmm. well know? we emulate what we see not what we hear yes and if if that male is if that male figure is not in that household, then there's nothing for our young men to learn from. 
Oh, you ready to go to the solution? I was kind of holding that back. I was waiting. I'm not going to the solution. I'm, I'm, okay. I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm, if you want to go I'm, there, I'll go there. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so I so your question is you said there, really, there was really no question in there. I'm stating facts. Okay. Well, I'm gonna quote the great Judge Joe Brown. He said that since the 80s, when we entered into it, went from the crack epidemic to hip hop, went from fun to hardcore. Hip hop became the daddy. And you combine that with the drugs. Judge Joe Brown said now, after 40 years of that, we have men who are only male from the waist down and they're female from the waist up. Mm. Their mindset is effeminate. They want to be kept. They ain't trying to keep nobody because they've always been kept. Wow, that's powerful. That's powerful. Miss Miss Paula, you got something? Any of the ladies want to chime in right now? I, I, I totally agree. I totally agree. <laughs> I agree. Yeah. And, it, and, it go, and it goes back to, like you say, what they see. Mothers take care of the mothers. Mothers love their sons and raise their daughters. Mm -hmm. I've heard you know? that. Yes, I have. And then the, the boys come up, and the, the young men come up. Oh, that's that's really happening today. Mm -hmm. The same thing the women looking for, the men looking for it. We can't get a balance. Yeah. In these, you're right. Right. Go ahead. In these statistics, um, one of them that, that really struck me is that three out of four black girls have either been molested or there was an attempt to molest them. So it, this over-sexualization is trying to get control back, trying to be in charge of, of, of something in my life. And I think it happens on both sides with the males and the females. But imagine how staggering that number is, three out of four Black girls. It means that someone damaged them and nobody helped them. So when I hear the attitude, when I hear the firing back, when somebody's sitting in my office and now it's mostly on Zoom, you know, I'm, I'm sorry about I'm sure everybody zoomed out. Right. But uh, when I hear all of that, I'm wondering what happened to this young woman when she was a helpless little girl. You know, dad makes promises. He doesn't show up. And sooner or later, he's forgotten, you know. And a piece of them is missing on both sides. And you're telling these people to fall in love and make a family. Whenever y'all ready to get to the solution, I'm ready. But I really, I hate the judge got frozen because I had dropped a cold line on the judge. And I want to hear <laughs> what she had to say. She's unfrozen now. <laughs> what, what I think we will do with this segment, we got about another 20, uh, a little less than 30 minutes on this segment. I want to go to the, another part of the segment. And we would like to have episode two on this with the last two the last two segments and the solution. Mm -hmm. But before I turn it over to the judge, I want to put another thought in her head for she can go ahead and ask the questions that she want to ask you, Pastor Hood. Mm -hmm. Share the most common complaint from black men about not having enough time with their kids unless money is involved or the mother is in a good mood. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we're talking about custody issues now, visitation and custody. The yes, judge sir. is a good person to talk to to, to answer that. <laughs> we can't hear you. You're muted. Judge. I'm sorry, I forgot I did. And I apologize for that, y'all. I mean, that I, I forgot to charge, but my, com my computer was already low when I got started. And I forgot to plug it up, and that went out at the wrong time. I swear it I was, was perfect. Like, yeah, I was hoping that y'all didn't think I hung up on you or something. No, I, I thought the Lord did it, but you probably didn't hear that. Part. The Lord said, touch not my anointed. Judge, <laughs> until you do right by <laughs> Pastor Hood. <laughs> <laughs> I told you guys, Pastor Hood is hilarious. <laughs> okay, wait a minute. Okay, so I'm sorry. What was that question again? 
visitation issue about uh, mothers using leverage over the father to keep the child away. Mm -hmm. You know, there, there, there's a separation in court between the financial part and the visitation part, but they mm -hmm. tend to all run together. Right. And they do. I certainly agree with that. You know, as a municipal court judge, I, I, I don't, well, I see it come up, but um, I can only handle it to a, at, to a, uh, a certain degree because that's more in line with a um, chancery judge. Um, that's what they do. But I certainly see that. And um, because oftentimes, let's say, in what I see most often is in, in, in my domestic cases. Um, and let's say I um, someone comes before me and they're saying that the, uh, the, the, the dad came and got upset. He was supposed to be coming to pick up the child and he got upset with her or whatever. And there were words uh, uh, ex exchanged and he gets upset with her and slaps her or whatever. Well, sometimes what I find when I, when I delve into it is that um, the female who ends up f uh, f signing charges against him, I find that she may not have been signing charges against him because of something he did more so. Uh, it was more so him have bringing over the girlfriend when he comes to pick up mm -hmm. the child and mm -hmm. things like that. And so I, I, I see, um, I definitely see where they tend to uh, try to manipulate the situation by using things like, you know, um, money. Like, okay, well, the only way you're going to see the child is if you bring over this money. Or if you, you know, I called you for a pack of diapers, and if you don't bring it in, well, you're not going to see the child. Yeah, and I see, and that, and that's a sad thing because, because at the end of the day, the child is the, is the one who's always suffering every single time. The child is right in the middle of that crap, you know, and, uh, and that's unfortunate because it's not fair to, to the child. Yeah, so adolescence, um, uh, you know, is those those formative years and mm -hmm. it's being extended. Even insurance companies are recognizing that, uh, you know, not 18. We might want to keep this kid on with their parents to 25, mm -hmm. 26, because the maturity is not coming the way that it should. And unfortunately, uh, we 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 think that marriage is a big decision, but a ba having a baby is not. And, and that that. Uncle Sam standing in the background saying, I'll step in mm -hmm. and provide food and some income or some shelter, I think has hurt us. You know, when Lyndon B. Johnson implemented that, he was not a friend of the Negro. He was trying to make Negroes Democrats. That was his motivation. And he said so to make uh, the female dependent. And uh, I want to take you back to those days where the social worker will show up. And if his shoes are in the house, you know, or something that she could see of that man in the house, then you're going to have problems. And that was conditioning. That's social engineering. So you have about a decade or so of that. And now we do things and we don't know why we do them. And so this war between black males and black females is not a simple thing of we weren't raised right. It is a cultural construction. Mm -hmm. yeah, all right. Well, we want to do uh, for this tonight. I would like to invite you all back next Monday night at the same time for these, the last two segments. In the last two segments, give them a rebuttal, give you something to think about. Give the rebuttal. We're gonna get a rebuttal from the black women about men not trying hard enough, and we're gonna offer all options to the solution to bring the black families back together. All right. I hope that I will see you all, especially you, Judge Carpenter. If Pastor Hood can get back in here on that time, I'm quite sure we will be fine with this segment because you guys have really made tonight worth listening. If I will end, if we don't want to have any more questions for Pastor Hood tonight, I think Miss Paula got something. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go around the horn here. I'm gonna go with Miss Paula first, and then anyone else, uh, nod your head for uh, any questions to Pastor Hood, Miss Paula. You mute it. I don't have any questions, but you know, uh, 
this thing with the, I agree with some of the things you're saying, but I also disagree. I don't know if it was a disagreement, just a statement and a perception of the relationship and communication with the black male and the black female. You know, the black female seems as though we continue to, some of us, progress. Then we don't, we, there's no, we don't have a partner who's progressing with us, can't find them. You go to the college classroom, it's all females, very few males. And when they're there, and education, don't, it plays a big part, but people can have education and still be ignorant in communication in a relationship. They don't bring nothing to the table, but their wallet, their car, and whatever for themselves. Then yes. there's some women that does the same thing. I'm, I'm with the judge. I'm with you. <laughs> they do some of the same thing. I see both sides of the coin. Yeah. And there's mm -hmm. some women that's worse than men mm -hmm. in doing these things. So we have been poorly conditioned mm -hmm. with what we see, what we saw growing mm -hmm. up. We didn't know no different. And you find people, and when you sometimes you get some men that would admit, I didn't know. I didn't know this. You know, and now they wait till the, almost the wife is walking out the door with the children before he come to his senses. Well, I need counseling. Or if they willing to get counseling. That's how and that's now some of them, And now some of them say what? That's why I'm so busy. Yeah, I know. I, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I know. And you're seeing more men now coming into counseling. And some yes. of the black men are coming, you know? And I really appreciate that i can appreciate and not tell them so and that's a risk mm -hmm. that's a risk because a lot of black men feel like it's a weakness you know telling my business we don't have no business when you losing your family you having babies and you broke yeah well that's the the older ones the younger um you know i would say uh 40 and and younger they don't mind uh coming in yeah that's the age that's the age mm -hmm. that's coming yeah. in yeah, yeah. The old one's already damaged. Yeah, yeah. Don't, don't, don't feel like they need any help. Yeah, well, it's a different era. And, it uh, is privacy. And I can't trust. wait for the next episode because I want to ask you, Miss Paula, if these mm -hmm. men lack focus, who raised them? You know who raised them. The I mothers. want you to say it. I want you the to mothers. say it. The mothers. The fathers wasn't there. I want you to say it. I want the you mothers. to say it. Time. That's right. Thank you. That's well, then again. Time. Yeah, but we that's how we've been programmed to do that, too. That boy got the judge all messed up again. Oh, she got some books. <laughs> yeah. Well, see, here's the thing: you have to pay the cost to be the boss. Yeah, but well, we we are we are not we are not giving good instructions either. Oh, oh yes, I, we're gonna get to the solution, but oh but, no, but the first step to a healthy solution is ownership. All right. When when, when, when Oprah and Sally Jesse and Donahue and all them to my deed black men ain't no good. Y'all was like, that's right, Jerry, 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 right? <laughs> now oh, no. now, oh, no. now oh, no. you have oh, had no. the reins oh, no. by oh, yourself. No. I have learned life. through the years, Rev. Through the years, there's mm -hmm. a there's a balance here. I don't take sides because we both have have a con interjected mm -hmm. into this. Oh, yeah, absolutely. But no, we're talking both, both about genders. history. We can't argue history. No, no, we can't argue. You can't and, argue it, and, and, and it was designed like that. Okay. You know? But right. I'm, oh, I'm willing to hear you later, honey. Oh, I'm ready. <laughs> I'm ready. All y'all are right. going to be ruffled by the time it's over with. <laughs> but that's the end of this episode. So we have I'm going to let the judge be last, Pastor. <laughs> I'm going to go around the horn because just. <laughs> Just copping the head didn't grow. That means she got a lot up there she want to pull out. Yeah, she changed colors and everything. Yeah, uh, <laughs> uh, uh, John Amasha, are you are you are you are you want to say something about your head? If not, I would like to have you back for the next uh, segment. That's my all sister. right. I um, it's ironic that I was invited to this segment tonight. You, can you all hear me? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, great. Uh, because I was speaking with another educator earlier today, and we were talking about relationship and love. And I understood exactly where Judge was coming from, that the woman um, or women hold the relationship longer than men. Now, um, I, I do agree to that because we take a lot mm -hmm. that we shouldn't take. 
in order to keep the relationship going. Mm -hmm. That's one point. The second point is, as an educator, and I might be wrong, but this is my viewpoint, because I can have a lot of educators on the line, especially the one I spoke to today. Mm -hmm. It's hard to find a mate because a lot of men are intimidated mm -hmm. just by our title. And we're normal just like anybody else. Mm -hmm. We have feelings like everybody else. Some men are intimidated by finances. <laughs> I'm sorry. I wish you would have said something earlier. It's too bad. The time is over. So I, I, I waited to the very end. And, and, and <laughs> I don't like to the very end. end. You don't trust them. They wait till everybody talk. <laughs> they sneak. But I'm watching. I, um, <laughs> I'm, a, <laughs> I, I'm a single parent, and I have a son, and I'm and I'm. And um, we have I have a good village, a wonderful village helping me raise my son. And mm -hmm. thank God that he has he's no problem. Amen. And I hope and continue that he stay that way. Mm -hmm. I mean, he, we get up in the morning, we pray together before we leave at the house. He come out, he scrapes the ice off my wonder. And I was telling one of my coworkers the other day, I said, Ooh, I'm raising a good man. But who's mm -hmm. raising a woman? And another one, my grandmother, his grandmother, and his uncles all have a part in it. And I'm thankful for that. So it's not bad on every situation that a woman is raising a child, especially a male. Because I see it every day, grandparents raising children in the school system. Yeah. And it's very unfortunate. And I wonder, why did they have these babies and leaving on these older people? Why? It's it sad. Can. Yeah. <laughs> and a lot of women, and this is my last point, a lot of young women, they love to boast about, I got this much money in income tax because I got this many kids. That's yeah, so sad. That. <laughs> that is so sad. <laughs> that is so sad. But I'm going to start right there and I'm going to wait till next week and hopefully I can invite others to join in and um, we can continue. And you can continue to watch me because I'm not sneaky. Yeah, I was just, I was just playing. <laughs> I was just playing too. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. That's that's my sister, y'all. The only sister I have. That is my sister. Mm -hmm. Miss O'Neill, do you have anything? She you said she's fooling place. with that crazy man. She said she ain't fooling with this crazy man. She's staying out to pray. I don't have anything. I'm waiting. <laughs> okay. I need everything before I comment. But y'all gonna stop messing with my BFF. That's what the pastor gonna stop doing. <laughs> just because I like the pastor gonna leave that's, my that's BFF I like alone. I, I, I'm messing with her because I like her. I think that <laughs> look, look, look. don't make me. <laughs> that's my BFF now. All right. Get well, off of the You want people to watch, don't you? <laughs> you gotta get it. You gotta but get I'm it. waiting. I mean, I've heard some interesting things. Tonight, yeah. the topic is on point. I agree with what the pastor's saying, mm. and what my what Angie the judge is saying mm. about women trying to hold it together. We we do try to work and hold the relationships together, but I don't. Mm, the males. I'm raising a young. I raise a young man and I'm I hope and pray that what I've instilled in him he's taking it out in the world but we can only hope and pray that I'm a, I was a single mother as well that we've done the best that we could mm -hmm. seeing that there was no male role model because my brother was not here but he he stepped in now and his my son's father was not around, but he's trying now. But mm -hmm. what do we do? What do young black women do when we I have these young males that <laughs> we don't have a male to help raise them? What do they I see? Because we can't teach them how to be men because we're not men. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, I, I can't wait to tell you, but that's for the next the next okay, episode. I'm, I'm, I'm waiting. 
<laughs> the the solution that that I have been implementing has been about ninety seven percent successful, and so I want to share that with you when we come back. All right, Pastor, I'm gonna go before I turn it over to uh, uh, Johnny O'Neill. We got to go ahead and let the judge blow it up. <laughs> you know, all I can say is I I I really wish my um I really wish my uh laptop had not gone out early. <laughs> I have some stuff to say. <laughs> but no, um, but you know what? But I, I would like to say this though. Nothing is black and white. There are no bright line rules to anything, any of this. So, and I know that, you know, there may be a general rule to something, but then there's always exceptions to the general rule. Um, so the, the comments that, that I've made, um, cause I, you know, when, when I say that women, uh, uh, you know, tend to push the relationship longer, they tend to hold it together longer. Um, mm -hmm. you know, I, I'm not saying that there are not some men out there in relationships who, who or even in marriages, who done the same who do the same thing i'm not saying that at all but i i i, I believe you know <clears throat> if, um and i've never looked to see what studies were done on this but i believe that that's the case because again i believe that's how women uh, uh are, are wired you know to do that and let me just add this too that not all women are out there looking for um you know a guy with a bunch of money or a rough neck and all this you know there are women out there who look who are looking for someone who is going to um who is going to treat them the way that they know they are going to treat that man you know with respect and with love and with kindness that that's what they're looking for you know and um I just throw one more thing in there. You mentioned earlier about, you know, some guys, it's like some women who some some women don't want the nice guys. And, and, I, and I agree with that. Some women don't want the nice guys. The nice guys are boring or whatever, you know. But then there are some nice guys who get with the, a, a, a decent female and then they take advantage of that female. That's another thing. So anyway, it's just so many, so many different ways we can go with this. You know, we can go on and on. So I'm going to stop right there. All right. All right. <laughs> uh, I'm going to turn it over to uh, my moderator, even though we did most of the moderating tonight. He has something he would like to leave you guys with. Johnny? Pastor Stan, uh, Judge Carpenter, rest of the panel. I got this, and I'm going to paraphrase it from Pres President Obama's From President Obama's, you muted. I'm on mute. From uh, uh, President Obama. Hmm. Uh, two thousand two teachers in, in uh, Southside Chicago Church, and basically what he was saying <coughs> is that the black male has abandoned their responsibilities and are instead of acting like men, they're acting like little boys, and that's leading to a bunch of problems in the black family. Because, like my sister said, women, a woman cannot teach a young man, a young man how to be a man, or a young boy how to be a man. It takes a man to teach a man to be a man. And without a father figure being in a the household, there's five times more likely to drop out of high school. They're 20 times more likely to end up in prison. And they're nine times more likely to uh, drop out of school. And that's, <coughs> and I picked it out of his, his speech to go with this segment because that is what's happening today. And this is 2020, going on 2022. And this speech was given in 2018. And if you go back further into history, 40 years ago, it was still the same problem. So how do we, and we're going to get to that on the next episode of how we can fix this and bring the, the families back together. So I'm going to end with that piece and I'm going to say this, please subscribe to the channel, 
like the channel and leave comments because we're going to take those comments and present them to Pastor Stan, Judge Carpenter, Ms. Hudson, Ms. Lynn, Ms. Kim, the host of the show, Ava Orange, and myself. And out there, y'all, we're on our last uh, last minute. I would like to say thank you. Uh, again, 6 Central Time, 7 Eastern Time. I hope to see everybody here. Pastor Stan, last 30 seconds, sir. Uh, well, I can't wait. I enjoyed myself. Uh, thank you for inviting me. Uh, it seems like the time flew by, but there's so much more to uh, talk about. But uh, I guess the big issue is there is a solution and it takes all of us to put it in place. So I can't wait to talk about it next time. All right, with that, guys, I'm going to say I'll see you next week. Big O Entertainment, Straight Talk, No Chaser. Good night. Good night.